This is the Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is you, the Pit Crew, because we are here for today's edition of the Pit Stop, where you are the real star of today's show. Uh, happy Monday to everybody out there. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I had a good weekend. I did not get to do as much sim racing as I would have liked because I was doing so much testing and work on the studio, things like that. Been working on the streams and the layouts and just things like that. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there is something a little different today. I'll leave it on you guys to figure it out. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe it's subtle, maybe it's a, a big difference. But we are here to talk sim racing and uh, everything going on in that wonderful world of sim racing, whether you call it a sport, a hobby, I call it our common interest or our proving grounds in many cases. So anyway, I, again, hope you had a good weekend. Hopefully you guys got to do more racing than I did, but what is going on in the world of sim racing oh a couple people noticed yes yes we are playing around with a green screen today uh just trying things um i have a, a some automatic indicators which don't seem to be working because i think on friday it said declan six dollars 94 cents is the newest donation but i know we got a super chat donation on friday show so that should um show a different name and uh beyond that I believe we've jumped up like 20 subscribers, so why it still shows uh, John Boy, I'm not sure. So I'm working on some automated things that they do have available for OBS. Thank you, Dave. Glad to hear you guys like it. Just playing around. Always trying to have fun, seeing if uh, what will work and won't work, won't work around here. But every time I make a change, it means all sorts of new uh, uh, parameters change the lighting. Uh, Doug Cawley asks if there's a Discord race this week. Um, I don't know, Doug. We're going to have to uh, figure that out. But thank you for the donation. And, oh, there, the automated one went. But I don't see it updating the ticker. So thanks for testing our system, Doug. Um, I think that's actually supposed to be playing our spinning wheel graphic, not the running zombie. So we are working on things to continue uh, getting better here at the Sim Pit. Uh, don't know when and how much we'll use the green screen, but I thought it would be fun to play with and maybe perfect for this show in particular uh, where we are just trying to look at the news. So what is going on in sim racing? Number one, the Porsche Esports Super Cup debut at Silverstone. A good week to be at Silverstone, I suppose, but Sebastian Job swept it. They did a double race, so they did sort of like a, a short race, a sprint race, followed by the main feature race. Uh, which I love that concept, and I'm thinking that uh, after this week's coming truck race, we're actually going to switch the dirt truck, and I'm thinking we might have to do heat and main because of how likely it is that somebody might get taken out. Um, put a radar up and tell us the for the forecast here is hot. It's going to hit 92 here today. Some people will probably be laughing at me like 92. That's for wimps. Um, but... Uh, that is hot for me, so I'm not looking forward to that. 24 hours of spas this weekend. Yeah, Doug, that's what I thought. I didn't want to get ahead of myself, but I thought we had that going on this weekend, which means I need to double, triple up on practice because I'm so far behind, as usual. All right, so anyway, uh, Sebastian Job won both events in a, in a really good uh, race. One thing I want to show here, they're showing the last lap here on the iRacing uh, webpage, at Twitter, actually. And look at this racing that's going on. You know, Billy and I, in our show, we talk about respect. Uh, we talk about reputation. Um, and, and you know, look at the amount of respect these drivers are giving each other in what is a very heated but very gentleman. I mean, this is like true, true, I, I trust you, I respect you, and I want to win, but I'm not going to just take you out to do it. I'm going to get it done fair, or I'm just going to have to finish in second on this given day. Uh, but this is G2 Sebi uh, taking the, the win while Slays and J.K. Rogers put on a show. The two drivers battled it out through the final corners of Silverstone. So anyway, that's uh, Sebi going on for the win. And that battle we are looking at was actually second, third, and fourth place, I do believe. So quality racing going on in those Porsches. Respect or respect? <laughs> yes. Spa is the track of X's. You literally have to um, learn where you can cut and not cut. Um, it does look like a professional set. Oh, we're getting there. What I don't like, to be honest with you, and one reason I've not been a big fan of green screens, it is really critical of lighting. So if you see, like, right here, the table's going a little fuzzy. 
Um, also, there's a little line uh, right there. I, I don't like that harsh line. Where, and, and the reason you see that line isn't my hand cut off, because see the line's still there. Uh, it means that that edge is not green screening out all that well. Um, so that I don't like, and one reason I've kind of never been a huge fan of green screening, but it is 2019. We have to get with the times. I just need a little bit more lighting, believe it or not. I feel like I'm pretty well lit. It looks like I'm pretty clear. It's just the green screen needs a little more clarity to the um, the show. Uh, the other thing is if I'm going to implement this into driving, I'm either going to have to move the whole studio around or come up with something different because in my world, this is a different set than racing, which is over there facing completely different direction. Um Devin, yeah, I, I'll talk to you about that, and we'll work on it a little bit more. I was playing with the settings uh, a little bit and just wasn't quite getting it exactly where I want. Um, oh, I don't – Angel, I can't remember. I think that was on Wednesday's show of last week. It could have been um, on Monday's show. I'm pretty well lit. Sean Cole, 2019. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Um so, Angel, I can't remember the name of that INI. Anybody out there remember the name of that file, that that program we found that pulled all of the INI files for iRacing into one script so you could change everything graphically or all of the INI files simultaneously instead of having to find and open up each individual one? Uh, if nobody gives you an answer, though, that was either on Monday or Wednesday's show, I do believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, R Factor, uh, they had something going on at Zanvort this weekend. Um, so if you had paddock cards, you could actually go see Project Cars in the RL Racing in their VIP Lounge 8. Sounds kind of exclusive, so I'm not sure the general public got there. Sounds like the general public didn't get there, but we did have a R Factor sighting at Zanvort as they posted themselves. Sean is lit AF. <laughs> Um, none of us remember what we had for breakfast because we're all lit AF. Uh, U.S. qualifier number three, so we get some more gamer names. I see a comment. I've seen, I think we've seen mmm sauce before. Qualifier number three in the PC and PlayStation. Again, not competing. This is Project Cars G Sport Challenge. Uh, TH THR Operator. Winning in both the PC and PlayStation, cleaning up on 500 bucks. Mm, sauce winning uh, second, driver 13 in third, THR in the other uh, discipline on the PC, THR Wild Win in second, and Chonk Taxi coming in in third, winning 150 and $100 respectively. Uh, in the Cody's blog, which there's not a whole lot to look at, we've already talked about the updates, we've already talked about most of the things going on at Cody's. Uh, however, uh, this one is maybe worth checking out. I mean, like, when I get into rally racing, to be honest with you, I don't even know where to begin with setup. It, setup to me is hard enough when you're on tarmac where things are very regimented. I mean, you can only, there's a certain amount of consistency to tarmac. Uh, however, when you look to the dirt, I'm not, I don't know if I feel it enough. Like, when I drive the trucks, I don't even know what it's missing. It's just not doing what I want it to do. Um, anyway, uh, here is a video that was put out by Cody, so you'll find it on the blog.codemasters.com community, Dirt Roadblock July, and it is Dirt Rally Setups, giving you a little insight. This is Tuning Setups by GTR Technical. So if you want to know what to do in that sim or why to do some of the changes, you'll find that in that video right there. Um... What else? What else do we have to talk about? Formula One. Okay, this is just something they posted. And for me, this is an opportunity to kind of do a little more Codemasters bashing. Um, sorry, Codies. But here's them patting themselves on the back. We are so awesome. Look at us. Look at us. Five out of five. Nine and a half out of ten. Four point seven out of five. Ninety one. Lowest score you're going to find here on this promo by them is the equivalent to an eight point six out of ten. I guess that would be a 4.3 out of 5 or uh, 86%. So these are glowing reviews. But then when you look at the names, and this is just sort of what makes me kind of laugh. Do you see a single company, a single name here that even knows anything at all about sim racing? 
you know, I don't see a Jimmy Broadband score. I don't see a Gamer Muscle score. I don't see a Sean Cole score. I don't see a William Marsh score, Billy Strange score, or any of the the streamers that you might watch. Um, and I just think it's sort of funny. Uh, when you make a driving game and you're not even quoting a single established not even motorsport journalism. I mean, you don't even have any any car game, car companies, anything. Uh, anyway, that just kind of made me laugh that they, they applaud themselves so mightily, but maybe we're a complete letdown to the motorsport and certainly the sim racing world. Um, there you go. There you go. Can you trust your reviews? Great imagery here. Uh, Igor Fraga. Igor Fraga is one of my serious high... Uh, heroes um yeah ign is trash nowadays i agree i think that ign is sort of gone by the yeah the doug score uh <laughs> um i you know i think this happens in journalism i think a lot of these sites become more focused you know you start they call it selling out <laughs> you start a site you start a hobby, a, a anything, and it's like you do it out of love. You know, I, I truly believe that when Henry Ford started the company, there was a, a pride in the product, and the point of the company was to make cars for the people. Like, that's where, what it was about. And then at some point, long after him probably, it became more about stock holders it became more about share pricing and the value of the company more than the product themselves and i truly believe that this is one of the corruptions that happens in capitalism it's just a natural evolution that took time for 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 greed to overpower moral or ethic code um, but those days are upon us and and i just feel that that you know, review sites, they start off wanting to be involved in the gaming community, and at some point they become corrupt to money, and uh, I do do good reviews for cash. <laughs> uh, Paul Stoker, what would I have given it out of five? I would probably have given it about a three and a half out of five. I think it's a solid C, so if you go to a, you know, the scoring I used growing up as a child, a 70 was a C on a test. Uh, I, I think that's about where it is. I mean, maybe a C plus. Maybe I'd go up as much as is uh, 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 75, 75%. I mean, I think it's a good game. Uh, I just think that they really wanted more out of it. They, they were a little confused in what they were trying to create, and th that made it really hard for them to find their true niche. And that's what I'm looking for in a game title is them finding their own niche. So if they want to be a sim, then be a sim. You want to be a game, be a game. You want to be living the life, then be living the life. You know, we have a lot of, of needs and wants in our sims. And all I'm saying is if you set out to do one thing, and this is why I'm very skeptical of Grid, um, because I just feel like they've really been trying to do too much. You're trying to appeal to too many people, and there's no real way to do that. You know, iRacing. Billy Strange in the house. How is your show, Billy? I've been thinking about you. How is your show Friday night? But, you know, if you're iRacing, iRacing is not going to make the gaming community happy. And they have made no attempt whatsoever to make the gaming community happy. And you can fault them for being what they are. But on the other hand, I applaud them for sticking to their guns and being true to what they said they were going to be, what they have always strived to be. And, and I just, you know, it's like, give me a twisted medal and I'll love the title. I am no sim elitist by any means. However, I do firmly believe that you need to make a game for the market you're going. We have a, we do have a group, a, a variety of different types of games, driving disciplines that we want. They need to pick one and go with it or pick a couple. Anyway, back to Heroes. Igor Fraga. Man, talk about living the life. So here's a real-life shot of Igor Fraga in victory and an in-game likeness of Igor Fraga in victory uh, because he has done it for real. Uh, so he won at the Red Bull Ring in the 
his fourth overall race. Or no, he's sitting fourth in the points, and he has now won his first race in the Formula Regional European Championship. And if you think, ah, what's that? That's what that is. That <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up right there. Igor Fraga, not only racing, not only holding fourth in the championship in his first year, but winning at Red Bull Ring. So everyone applaud, and maybe Igor Fraga will be the first sim racing jersey that I wear here on the show. Um, iRacing needs to be on the PS5. I don't think they're going to go that route. I mean, there was always talk of an iRacing light, something that would be made a little more gamey to introduce people to it, but uh, it never really came to be. And, and I guess I'm glad because there are other things that I think I'd rather see them actually pursue. Um, here we have a McLaren shadow showing off. Carlos and Lando weren't the only drivers representing McLaren at Silverstone UK today. Great effort from the shadow crew. Enzo Benito, Bono Hui, and uh, in the Pro Series. So anyway, one of the things I'm talking about, this is something Billy and I talked about. What team you get picked on in these eSport things could be very significant, not just to how much money you may or may not make, but what do they do with you? You know, are you just there in the name of throwing on a shirt and a jersey and just, yeah, okay, whatever, he runs for us? Or are they helping promote you? Are they helping you get, you know, Enzo Benito was in the race of champions. Make no mistake, his affiliation to McLaren probably had something very significant to do with that. So uh, I applaud McLaren's shadow, in my opinion, of being one of the real leaders in our esport world of not just putting a name on things, but really going out of their way, making a difference. This shadow competition, somebody's going to get a ride in an Aston Martin. They're going to get to ride in the real-life Daytona 24. Um, these guys going from race to race, being part of the PR, being promoted by them, being used to... to Show what sim racing can do and what it's all about and maybe where the future of motorsport really is. <coughs> um, yes, yes, bad flounder. Yes, yes, Igor, he is not a rookie to real-life racing. Uh, let's, yeah, that, let's be clear. He is a rookie to that series, though, for sure. Uh, face of motorsport, face of eSport, Harvin and Brooks earn e NASCAR Heat Pro League wins in Chicago. So here's Josh Harbin. Earns his team a playoff berth with his victory, while Justin Brooks, uh, they go by gamer names The Bear 95 and The Mr. Track Bar 33, becomes the third driver to score multiple race victories during the inaugural season. So here are the two of the guys who are uh, really kicking butt over there in the NASCAR eSport series. And now you know. Hugo Louis, not to be confused with Bono Hui, but equally as notable. Uh, Hugo Louis is a mini time champion and he is stepping down from the 2016 is that like a is that six upside down this was posted today uh by will vincent very notable very trustworthy uh what makes me think they really stepping down from the 2016 season um to concentrate on other ventures and this is what we've talked about you know vrs uh not vrs i'm sorry the WCS, uh, the, the, the iRacing World Championship Series. So anyway, uh, Hugo Louis is stepping out of that. Not sure why they're calling it the 2016, by the way. I'm a little little confused. That, that threw me for a major loop right there. Um, he was a Japanese karting champion. <coughs> ah, I lost his economy tanked. All right, the Igor Fraga story from Alex Seven. Thank you, Alex. I, like I said, you guys are the real star of today's show. Always uh, got my back, the pit crew. Igor was a Japanese karting champion. Then when the world economy tanked, he lost his sponsor and moved back to Brazil. He's not from a rich family. Um, so that, it, yeah, and I think he did some other... I think he did some other full-size open-wheel cars. I think it went beyond just karting. Didn't he run, like, an F4 or something like that? Some... I can't remember. Uh, definitely can't remember. Uh, let's see. USF 2000. Yeah, it was something like that. I do remember him racing something else. 
Uh, Vettel didn't have a load cell break in that pick. I missed a picture of Vettel. I didn't see that. Uh, David Parcell, GT Sport Racer, YouTuber, got 27 that zoned this weekend at Blanc Payne. Tire issues. Cool, cool. Um, I think I've caught up with you guys at this point. Um, yeah, he won the um, R Factor. Yeah, Igor Fraga is. I mean, if we were to. You really, if you had to make a top three sim racers, here are my top three sim racers Igor Fraga, um, Bono Hui, and Brendan Lay. If if I had to right now pick my top three sim racers on planet Earth, those are the three: Igor Fraga, uh, Brendan Lay, and and I've lost my mind. Car Heroes, thank you, thank you very much. Part of our thing should chime in with that; the other part won't. Um, bon Ahui, Igor Fraga, and Brendan Lay. Those are the top three sim racers. If I had to do a power ranking. To me, those are the top three on planet Earth. There it is. There's our donation through Super Chat. And again, I have no idea why it still says Declan694 and John Boy. Uh, I'm going to have to work on that. Otherwise, those graphics are going to have to go. We can't have dead graphics here. That, that won't be acceptable at all. Uh, Race Spot to extend Race Spot TV to extend iRacing partnership in 2016. Will Vincent seems to have forgotten what year it is again this is posted this morning 7 15 2019 don't be confused um anyway uh they are extending their partnership i'm assuming that's actually for 2020 uh if we're really unless they're just writing some seriously seriously uh, dated dated articles here uh <laughs> hola very funny um yeah there you go tom Absolutely spatial, Tim. Uh, GT Academy has made a whole slew of, of drivers who've gone on to many, many great things and still to this day. Um, Invader, I am not alien level. I've tried GT Sport. I actually made a run at GT Academy two years ago, and the top 30 were got the invite. This was the year there was all sorts of shenanigans. I had myself in that top 30 on a couple different occasions, they did a handful of different resets that went beyond the calendar date, and I was already doing a show, and it just got to the point where I just couldn't keep doing it. It took 24-7 runs. I mean, you had to just make that your full-time job, and it just... It, it, anyway, uh, it, when they did the final reset, I just couldn't dedicate another three, four days to it, so I gave up. Uh the reason I gave up, by the way, had I been in the top 16 who would, gone, who would have gone on, I believe they're having a showdown between the top 30 or 32 to narrow it to 16 to go on to the actual academy. That grouping was so tight and a little bit out of my league that I was like, well, if I squeak in, I'm just there to be one of the bat markers so they can say they had a big converse, uh, competition. So with that and the new time requirement it was going to take, I bowed out and stopped running. But I have given GT Academy a shot in the past. I, I'm not uh, afraid of doing such things. Don't know if I still have those skills. I haven't been driving as much. You know, the show limits the amount I actually get to compete or hone my skills. Article here in the South China Morning Post talking about Formula One esports in Hong Kong paving the way for budding drivers to pursue a career on a simulator or the road. Sideways Racing Club in Central offers close to a real experience of F1 driving as possible with 15 network simulators. And they talk about a lot of local pro guys, guys who actually run in real life, coming in uh, and, and actually using this place. So there's a quote here. Um, uh, Lau, Daryl, Young, Matthew Marsh, Matt Solomon, and Daniel Bilski are – among the Hong Kong drivers who have made use of the center, which recently moved from Chancery Lane to a bigger space on Peel Street. Anyway, uh, just a sim center and talking about how the local pros actually come in there and do run and race there. Very, very cool. Uh, if you want more out of this, Xbox Hub, already talking about being hands-on. Was the Xbox Hub on here? Xbox Hub was the first one they listed. Five out of five. They said this was a perfect five out of five. That is Nadia Kobanich 
level game making. Just to put it in perspective, when you give a 5 out of 5, when you give a 10 out of 10, and they are the only ones to go that far out on a limb, by the way. Xbox Hub. Big shocker, Xbox Hub now has the latest version of Grid in-house and giving you some hands-on. Do you trust it? Do you trust it? All right. What else? What else we have to talk about today? Here's blows my mind what they do and how it just keeps going <laughs> yes yes it cannot get any better right right this is perfection we should stop we should all go home we should only play code masters f1 2019 call it a day right there f you everybody else this is the one um anyway boom talking about stunt race bonuses rocket into gta online i just mention it because it's still like you know to me what's funny about gta woo <clears throat> um what blows me away about blah, 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 what blows me away about gta is how much of the afterlife has been dedicated hey chad chad payette you subscribed i see it but it didn't change my new assist you are not john boy something is broken i have to fix it or that's got to go gotta go devin devin help me um Anyway, uh, it blows me away how much the GTA Online Afterlife has been dedicated to the racing aspect or the driving aspect of the game. Uh, it's really cool how much. And that was one thing that struck me about not just this version, previous versions. The driving in Grand Theft Auto has always been an enjoyable experience, even using a controller. I've always wanted to use a wheel and it was compatible with wheels, but then I couldn't do the shooting stuff right. Um, so I always did it with a controller, but at the same time, it, it was a quality driving experience. I've always enjoyed it, and I mean, you gotta love running over innocence standing on the side of the road. MotoGP, we haven't talked about this since last season. Oh, Devin, I was, I was saying, do you know how to help me? My, my automated things, the, the alert box is working, but my newest subscriber and newest donation are not. Um, I have to figure out what's going on there and why they're not updating. Um, upsets me because I like those. They look cool. I made those graphics, by the way. Um, how about a soap on a rope necklace when you're ready to rant? <laughs> what, I just put it in my mouth to make sure I don't say what I, sh I hold my words? Then everything will be a five out of five out of me. Um... <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you. We are, yeah, we're just playing around with new things. We wanted to see how it'd work. Uh, don't know if we'll be able to implement it into other aspects of the show. Uh, it takes a little bit of setup, lighting, things like that. But we're moving along. Uh, anyway, MotoGT Esport, it's really back and going again. See which riders were fastest in the astonishing, astonishing online challenge number four. Adrian DP26 from Spain on the PS4 with a 144. Uh, about a half a second quicker than the second place. George Sprinter, also from Spain. So it looks like uh, the Europeans are who are playing at least. Uh, oh, that was the European division. Hey, what do you know? And then from the rest of the world, it looks like Australia, who's really playing, and South Africa. Brock Top from Australia on the PS4 with a 146. So looking at that, comparing the rest of the world to European times, by the way. The rest of the world best time, Brock Top, was a 146.4, which would have... Put him. Well, I don't understand their scoring. I I see scoring, and then all of a sudden I see other ones with even lower. Anyway, he wouldn't have even made the the leaderboard in the European, by the way. Um, so we are starting to see who's heating up in MotoGP esport for this year. Uh, Project Cars Logitech G Challenge also starts in Italy. So I've been giving you the updates and the winners weekly uh, that, what, eight qualifier stages for it in a in the U.S. They are also doing them in other regions, and apparently the Italian version starts today, the 15th. It's running July 15th through, uh, bah, 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 bah. I thought I saw a date. September 22nd, five, qualifi five qualification phases uh, 10 weeks time available. Anyway, from July 15th to 27th. So if you're in Italy, 
Uh, it's going to be a smaller competition in Italy, right? Yeah, but look at MotoGP. Italians were racking it up. Europeans, they know how to drive. Um, all criticism should now be followed up with, but F1 2019 is perfection. Yes, when you want to compare anything to just know when something is deserving of a five, you compare it to F1 2019. Higgs Boston, I, I don't uh, uh, disagree with you. I, I like the game well enough. I'd easily give it a, a, a 75, a C plus. Um, and I like that they built in some single player mode. I'm just a little confused about what they were trying to achieve with the title. And that's what left me wanting. Um, but I do like some of the aspects of the game. Uh, what I don't like is when it's being given scores that are just you know, again, five out of five. Is it a five out of five, Higgs? I mean, I like the game plenty. Don't even get me wrong. I'd recommend it to a friend even, depending on what they play and why they are looking for a particular title. Like, if somebody said, hey, I'm looking for a single-player mode, I'm never going to race online, and I love Formula One, I'd be like, well, you should totally get F1 2019. I'd have no second-guessing that recommendation in that scenario. Um, if somebody said, I'm getting into sim racing and I want to really feel like I'm racing... I would not recommend the title. Uh, I just wouldn't. So uh, Mike Pittman leaves a Avid Chronic Racing. So Avid Chronic is sort of going through a phase, something we expected from some of those, you know, top, mid, top level esport teams that aren't in the esport ranks, the teams that we've known for years, long before esport even was a word. Um, anyway, but he was at the helm of Avid Chronic for a very long time, and he's moved on to other ventures. So more of our silly season. We think of him more of a management person than, than although he's a gifted driver, than like a, a, a Mitchy Hoyer type driver. Anyway, uh, these come from Mike as well, but the WCS League, so this apparently is where Mike has landed. Pre-qualification has started. This is that $1,000 uh, shootout. So anybody could win $1,000. It's on our factor using the official Marusha content by Studio 397. These cars are a handful, but fun. So that is now going on, and top 30 drivers by 2100 on Friday. Uh, $2 entrance fee, but $1,000 up for grabs. So if you're an R-Factor Pro, head over there and maybe get some money. Article here, I didn't even read it. The verse talking about could gambling kill eSport? I don't need to read the article to ponder the concept in my own mind. Don't know their opinion. Don't know if they're even a, a worthy place, but... Sports, you know, sports and gambling go hand in hand. Sports and gambling and cheating and corruption, unfortunately, also go hand in hand. Would it be easier to cheat in the esport world? Would it be easier to throw games in the esport world than in professional real life sports? I don't know. Um, that would definitely have to be one of the things brought into mind. The other is what type of competition? Is it the type of competition that, that gambling is appropriate? I mean, at this point, you know, Vegas will take a bet on a bet, you know. Um, so it, who knows there? Um, certain countries have already gone out of their way to make it illegal to gamble on eSport. Other countries are going through the processes to expedite and legalize. Uh, how will that affect competition? We talked about how we talked about capitalism and how it's affected gaming review sites even. Um, how will gambling affect eSport. Uh, it could be, yeah, if there's more money in throwing the race than winning the race, which means there's enough money being bet on the race to justify making that payment. I mean, it's a whole chicken or the egg evolution yin-yang that has to occur for this to even happen in concept. But at some point, it's something that has to be considered. Um, is eSport different? I mean, like, a, base, a pro baseball career is something you could say is sacred. And some people would, would like, you think of the Pete Rose. Well, Pete Rose was busted for gambling on sport. He was never busted for cheating as a gambler. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, gosh, does gambling in sport go all the way back to eight men out? Uh, <laughs> the, the Black Sox, so to speak. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Tim, I'm glad to hear it from you because you were there when we were contemplating whether we should do it or not. Uh, a couple of teams threw games in Dota <coughs> while betting against them for themselves banned for life. And see, that's the problem. 
You you cross that line and you will be banned for life. And that's not one of those banned for life, but we'll let you back in in like four years, you know, like for a drug infraction where they'll ban you for life based on a, a drug infraction. And then four years later after rehab, you're back. Uh, gambling is the kind of thing there is no coming back from uh, for sure. Um, anyway, all right, all right. What else do we have? What else do we have? Okay, this one. So I'm going to tell the story, and anybody who can figure out what I'm talking about before I get to the end of it, uh, I will applaud you for being a true fan of everything Simpit related. Uh, it's kind of an inside story, but it's not. Um, Microsoft opened its first flagship store in Europe where you can drive a McLaren Senna and play the latest Xbox games. What? What am I talking about? Well, there you're playing the regular Xbox games. This is, again, the new Microsoft flagship store in Europe. This is in London. And then when you scroll down, here we are in the very busy underground area. Uh, I, underground underground's the, t the the trains, I believe. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know. What is the underground? I think that's the subway there. Anyway, uh, talking about the big new store. There's a big deal going on. You can try everything that is Windows. And right there in the back, can you see it? What's that back there? That's a McLaren Senna. That is a McLaren Senna built into a full motion simulator. So there you have an amazing full motion simulator. You can actually go sit in and drive a McLaren Senna at the Microsoft store. It's there. Um, anybody know why I'm a little touched by this story? Anyone? Underground is the subway. Thank you. Thank you. I figured as much. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm somewhat smart. Um, anyway, the game is fitted with a model simulator, which brings the Forza Motorsport 7 game to life. Um, so anyway, uh, the reason I do mention this is I almost went to London to work on this project. I was actually invited to work on this project. Uh, it was going to be three weeks in London, which was like, it was really hard for me to make the time. We were working on it. I was going to go. Then I wasn't going to go. Then I wasn't going to. Yep, this was my sim. I was going to be there for this one. And there it is in the store up and running. So congratulations to VRX. I don't know if anybody in the world knows other than us that that's actually VRX handiwork. Um, but that is a sim. The wheels stay on the ground. The whole car moves on top of it. And the suspension all moves to interact with it. So very, very cool sim. I'll try to get, I can probably get us some inside photos. Maybe we can get some better photos than we've seen here. I'll ask the guys for it. They're, um, they'll send them over. Another sim center. This one's in Netherlands, I believe. Immerse, full motion VR experiences. They've got a F1 racing experience. That looks like an RC F1. They've got 4D VR race experiences. The prices, look at the prices. 19.95 euro for the F1, 20 minutes. 29 bucks for 20 minutes of 4D VR. Two heats of 4D racing. Uh, 47 bucks. Looks like uh, they go. Now it looks like they've got direct uh, het immersive. Oh, a het. It's a foreign language. Uh, you can do bachelor parties, group tickets, corporate parties. Anyway, uh, cool simulators. Looks like their 4D is a D box driven Vasaro. And then they've got their monster with the big, big monitors. And that looks like an R seat. Uh, if you're looking for more of a static rig at a more affordable price. So anyway, this is at uh, Immersive Experiences, and I'm not even going to try to say that, but here's the address. Uh, I believe that's the Netherlands, right? Right? Someone? Anyone? Please? Please? Help me. Um, eSport Earnings. This blew my mind. So this is eSport Earnings. Top games of 2019 so far. I mean, keep in mind, we're only in July. Fortnite, number one, $15,761,000 has been distributed to 1,742 players. Anyone do the math on that? Someone, quick. 15 million. Just round it up to 16 million. Divided by 1,742 players, and you would know what the average share, we'll call it, uh, per player would be. That's amazing. 191 tournaments it took. It only And, and you could say only... Because Counter Strike Go uh, has earned ten million four hundred thousand amongst twenty two hundred players, but it took three hundred and eighteen tournaments to get there. Um, look at that money! Top three games are going to take you up over thirty three million dollars. Top three games 
and over $33 million. We are professional. Esport is pro ranks. Um, the downside of this is you would have to look very far to even find something you'd consider a sim. Rocket League, I guess you could call a driving game to an extent at number 12, earning $1.6 million, 37 tournaments, 200 players. Um, my brother, I caught him. My brother was watching a FIFA 2019 tournament yesterday. Just yesterday. He watched the whole thing from start to finish. Um, just saying for this for the record, FU Fortnite. <laughs> that is $14,000 a player. 1,742 players, 191 tournaments, an average take-home pay of $14,000 for being one of the top 1,800 players in Fortnite. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Looking down, can we find anything that resembles a sim whatsoever? I don't know if they're counting us correctly because, I mean, I, like, I'm sorry, but didn't F1 2019 with one tournament blow away 100000 for Madden NFL 19 with two tournaments. So, oh, iRacing. Here we go. iRacing, number 40 on the board, paying out 36000 to 156 players. That's some funky math. I, I, I'm just going to – that doesn't seem right to me. And where's F1 2019 then? FIFA. Mm -mm. No, I'm not seeing it iRacing is the only one that is really on the list. Number 40, R-Factor 2, $25,000. Gone out to R-Factor 2 drivers this year, supposedly, by their way of counting. Race Room, 8400 Project Cars 2, two grand. I think they're underestimating us by quite a bit. Anyway... Uh, the main thing here wasn't so much the accuracy, is just the overwhelming amount of money going in it. And will that bubble total prize money that they're saying so far in 2019 has been $66 million amongst 2,186 tournaments. Total active players, this is professional esport players in the world, 14,000 for the year. 14,000 people doing this now. Um, anyway, interesting information. A while ago, I had done a load cell mod for the Thrustmaster T3PA pedals. This was done by BF Electronics. Uh, all I have here to show off what they've done, they've made some changes since I did that and added things. So number one here is now available. I don't have a price here. I should, but I don't. Sorry. You can check it out at BF Electronics. But now they are officially doing the other pedal set. So this is the T3PA load cell kit. A lot of people sent me emails asking if they were doing one for the T3PA or only the T3PA Pro. And it turns out that, yes, they do do that as well. In addition to that, they have a light version. So they're making some changes and adjustment based on feedback on how strong a load cell, how strong a pedal. But the light version is also available. You'll find both of those now at the bfelectronics.com.au site. And I think we're almost to the end. We're to the point where we're talking about Simregs, I do believe. So... First off, this is in Puerto Rico. Now, I immediately recognize the rig because I've worked for CXC extensively, and I know these paint schemes very well, that wrap job on it. But look at this whole row of beautiful simulators that is now there in Puerto Rico. I, I'm friends with Chris Conte, and I was wondering, why does he have all these posts of him in Puerto Rico? I wonder why he went to Puerto Rico. Now I know why, because they must have had a giant install with this whole row of CXC simulators. This almost looks like... If I had to guess, this almost looks like somebody bought the trade show setup. Like, these are the six rigs that were at IAPA. I'm going to have to find out from Chris if that's the case. Somebody might have bought them. A lot of times you can get things cheap at a trade show. You know, little trick, if you go to a trade show, most companies don't want to pack up all their crap. They'd rather sell it. So if you go to the la trade show at the end and be like, are you guys taking those home or are you selling them? You can usually get, like, a better than an open box deal buying the actual ones. Here at Reddit, this is posted by Esterbon AGPA, and it's a PVC rig. I love it. Two weeks and $140 later, he's very proud of his DIY rig. I love the PVC rig. Such a cool, cool design. Such a great idea. Such a great use of something that you'd never expect to be a rig turned into a rig, and it actually works out really well. What I also like is, for how rigid and sturdy it is, I don't think you can build a rig that weighs less 
than a PVC rig for the amount of rigidi rigidity that it gives um, in return. Anyway, uh, this is like a Rickmotech RS1, the do-it-yourself plans. This looks like one of those type of wood rigs. Nice looking box structure. Looks like he even did a little carpeting. Nice junkyard seat. Gotta love the junkyard seat. This is by Juicy Josie Boyo is the name. Posted that one. Another one of those type of designs is, again, much like a Rickmotech RS1, but sort of their own DIY version. This being posted by Mr. Monkey 1990. So any of you out there still on a desktop, I'm just showing. You can get it done for uh, pretty, pretty darn cheap. Uh, video here by David O'Reilly. David hangs out, watches the show from time to time. Anyway, David is another sim racer turned real life racer. You know, why do I lemons race? Because it's the cheapest way to get on a real life track. I love sim racing. I'll sim race every night of the week. But during the day, I want to be on the real track doing it for real. So David O'Reilly, who did the Sim Racers Performance Guide, you might have remembered that video from a while back. Anyway, if you go to David O'Reilly on YouTube, you'll find his third ever race weekend in the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup Series. And he's doing his best to get a National A, International D license, and you will see exactly how it works so from uh sim racing to real life just like all of us want to and need to do you can check that out at david o'reilly on youtube devin booth in the house devin booth runs mazda mondays but last week and this week i believe it's mercury mondays or mercury mercedes <laughs> merc merc mondays Today at about noon, you will find a new video posted. Devin posts all the videos that, that our community is involved with on the Simpit Crew channel. I haven't talked about that in a while, but if you look up the Simpit Crew channel on YouTube, you'll find videos from Devin Booth, including Mazda Mondays. So maybe you run and you want to watch that race. Well, last week's race will be there at noon. Dave Blair's done a bunch of videos. <clears throat> I've done a bunch of videos. Mitchie Hoyer streams from there. We've done some Wreck Fest videos from there. Anyway, uh, definitely check out the Simpit Crew channel, and you can check out the latest greatest from Devin Booth today at about noontime. And then to finish this off, I have a couple others that were sent in via email, and this one is going to make us all laugh. So this one here we're going to call the WTF Rig. This was sent in to us by Corsa. And look at this. I don't want to use the wrong word that would offend. Uh, he's got a Thrustmaster wheel. No problem there. But look at this rickety, sketchy rig that is supposed to hold his equipment and be sim racing worthy. I have never seen something quite as questionable when it comes to sim racing. I, I think if you need a 10-pound weight to hold it down, I it might be a guitar stand. I couldn't even recognize exactly what or how it's doing. Yeah, like maybe a rolling golf cart. Talking about doing whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, man. I, it's better than being on desktop, I suppose. So thank you, Corsa, for sending that one in. The next rig I want to show you, look at this thing. Now, I saw this, and I thought this was like some pro. Like, okay, I see the 8020, then I see this box steel. What is this rig? Turns out this rig sent to us by Kelly, uh, Kelly Broadstater. This was built from a, a stop sign post. Look at it. It's one of those posts you've seen them. They're square, galvanized steel with holes going both directions all the way up the entire length, which that could then be used for any kind of bracketry, and you have an instant rig. Now, I am not telling you to go tear down a stop sign because I think that would probably be considered illegal. I'm going to guess that's illegal. I'm going to go out on a limb, so don't do it. But if there's a fallen one or you happen to have one somehow— Interesting idea and great use of another piece of, of metal. Uh, Shiro says he used a two-foot length of railroad track to keep his home-built shifter in one place. That sounds pretty heavy-duty. That sounds very heavy-duty, actually. Um, so well done. And then lastly, look at this sucker. So Baz. You guys uh, know Baz. Baz hangs out here all the time. Luco, Luca Bassini goes by Baz. He did the pallet rig. He just took, And this is a great idea. You'll find one of these at every supermarket behind the back, just a straight up uh, pallet. And then just kind of add your own pieces of wood, add some caster wheels if you need mobility, screw or bolt down a play seat challenge, and you've got yourself 
a sim rig. So great job there. Oh, some of these photos aren't playing exactly how I wanted them to. Sorry about that, Baz. But uh, uh, an incredible, incredible idea of just taking a pallet and turning it into a sim racing rig and putting it on wheels and being able to roll it around. I'd like, I want everything in my life to be on wheels now. I'm so limited on space and I'm changing things around so much here in the studio. I wish everything I had was on wheels. So let me check my notes here. I think that's everything. We talked about Bill Fletcher's load cell. We talked about that WTF sim rig. We talked about the stop signs post. We talked about David O'Reilly and the Mazda MX-5. We talked about Booth and Mercury, Mercury, Mercedes Mondays. And we talked about Luca Boz, Bossini's pallet rig. So that's going to do it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you think it stinks. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and tell a friend so we can continue to grow. I'll work on those lower graphics. So hopefully, I got to learn which way is which. We'll work on those lower graphics down there. And look at the way he did that with that palette. See the way he put his fanatic shifter right there on the palette? I love it. Anyway, thank you for being part of the pit crew. Thank you for being here just to hang out talk sim racing each and every day or the few days of the week that we do that's going to do it for this one get out there do some sim racing this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track oh and on my button box